So, what is the best new car that you can fit in your mate and a five-a-side football team? And you're on a budget. We reckon it could be this. The Dacia Jogger. Great car, daft name. So what's all the fuss all about? Well, like other Dachas, the Jogger is fantastic value. It's by far the cheapest seven-seater on the market. You can park one of these bad boys on your driveway for less than 15 grand. It is so cheap that its only real rivals are used cars. Just picture this, right? You can get one of these, a brand new one of these, starting at putting down £196 as a deposit and then £196 a month. I mean, that's crazy. I mean, the car still has to be good for that amount of money. So yes, we're going to look at it properly today, check out the tech, check what it's like to drive and the practicality, etc. But £196 a month, oh, that's bus pass money. It's worth bearing in mind that there are plenty of seven seaters around, which yes, might have seven seats, but some of them you'd struggle to stay comfortable for long. So let's see how the jogger stacks up. So I decided to bring along all of my mates. So Charlie here in the front, he loves it, doesn't he Charlie? He loves it. It's like this passenger seat is absolutely lovely. I've got lovely leg room, it's nice and comfortable. The boy's in the middle seats. So you've got Steve there in the middle and he's been saying how nice it is to sit in the middle even though he is the size of a child so it's probably about the right size for him. Stuart, on the other side, sat by the window over there, he was saying how the legroom is a little bit like a VW Golf, whereas Michael on the other side is saying he thinks it's better than a VW Golf. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. Dave, who's in the rear seats, um, he hasn't said a word, not a peep. Normally he complains a lot, but you're quite happy back there, aren't you, Dave? He's quite happy back there. Right, if you've got all of the seats up, you've got 212 litres of space, which is just a fraction more than, say, a Fiat 500. So, to try and make the most out of it, maybe fold the seats down or have one up, one down. You've got 60 configurations to choose from. Or you can try this. Now, here's the thing. You might not want seven seats. You might want to use this as an estate car. So you can actually completely remove these. It's a bit fiddly, but it's doable. I'm going to have to get rid of you, Dave. It's worth pointing out that each of these are 10 kilos, so it's not going to be easy for everyone. As you can see, I'm making it look really easy. Okay. Ninety-nine litres of space. Good. Oh, okay. Well done, Nicola. Right, let's talk about the design. So this one here is the mid-spec comfort model, which we think is the sweet spot in the range. But look, whichever one you go for, you're going to get very honest MPV SUV design. It's not trying to be something that it's not. It's not trying to make you weak at the knees, but it's not terrible to look at. I quite like the blue. Lights are very nice. You've got a nice bit of funky styling going on along the bonnet. I do have one little annoyance, and that's this bit here, because I don't understand why this has to be higher than that. Why couldn't that just match that? But along the back, I mean, you've got tinted windows. Everything looks pretty reasonable for 15 grand. Hey, by the way, we've gone this far in the video and you haven't even noticed that I'm wearing joggers, because we're filming with a jogger. All models get aircon, cruise control and automatic headlights. And our comfort model gets electric mirrors and wheels that look like alloys but really aren't. Plus these very clever roof rails, which you can turn into roof bars to carry loads up to 80 kilograms. The actual car weighs just 1,200 kilograms as well. That is lighter than a GR Yaris hot hatch. Which is quite weird actually considering the size difference between the two i know it doesn't quite have the same engine as that i mean this has a one liter three cylinder turbo engine which has 108 brake horsepower 200 newton meters of torque which actually is probably about right for a car like this i mean it's not gonna 
knock your socks off when you put your foot down, but it's not bad. I feel like Datcha Jogger probably isn't the right name for it because a jog is just a casual run. Datcha Data, maybe. Because when you do put your foot down, it goes. Don't underestimate this car. Don't you judge it. If you're behind one, don't you judge it. Because there might be a speedy driver in there, like me. I would say the only time you're going to find this really sluggish is when you do actually have seven real humans in this car. I'm not saying you're not real. I didn't say that. Why would I say that? You know what I mean. If there's, yeah, it tends to slow down the car a little bit and it feels a little bit meh. But apart from that, it's not too bad at all. There will be a more powerful version coming out very soon, which is going to be a hybrid. Dacia's first ever hybrid. That's coming out 2023, so we'll look forward to that. Now, underneath everything, it runs on the same Renault platform as the Sandero, so the suspension is quite soft, soaks up lumps and bumps pretty well, it does have a little bit of body roll, but you can forgive that, it's not too horrendous. I drove it on the M25 getting here, actually, today. It wasn't really unhappy to be there. It was fine. Noisy. The tyre noise and the wind noise was pretty loud, but no, it felt pretty comfortable being there. Now, Dacia are officially claiming 49.6 miles per gallon. But actually, since we've had it, well, it's roughly around 44 to 45 instead. And CO2 emissions of 132 grams per kilometre result in a reasonable benefit in kind tax ban for company car drivers. Now, we're expecting the biofuel engine to join the lineup later on this year. Now, while that has around 37.1 miles per gallon, LPG is significantly cheaper than regular petrol. Especially with the price of petrol at the moment, it might be worth considering. Now, the interior is exactly what you would expect it to be. It is cheap and cheerful, although I'm not going to lie, when I first sat in here, I went, oh, fabric, treat yourself. Look, everywhere else you look, scratchy plastics, scratchy plastics. But, you know, in every car, there's like one satisfying button to press. You know what I mean? For me, in here, it's the volume control down here. It's like a little sort of flip switch and the whole time I've been driving this car I've just been doing the volume up and down because that is so satisfying in terms of like driving position etc I mean you've got analog dials to look at everything's reasonably comfortable on this uh, mid-spec model on the comfort pack you get this eight inch touch screen which has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto yes it looks like an iPad has just been shoved onto the dash but it's not terrible I mean for the money it's not bad at all. What do you reckon, Charlie? Charlie really likes it. Oh, and also, reversing camera. Look at this. God! Dave! Classic Dave. But seriously, the thing with the Jogger is that it's just so affordable. Finding another brand new seven-seater anywhere near 15 grand is just impossible. There aren't even any massive drawbacks to speak of either. Well, hold that thought. Since we filmed this review, Euro NCAP has released its safety rating for the Jogger and it scored one star. Just one out of five. Not good for a car you'd ferry your kids around in. Although, it is worth mentioning that Euro NCAP didn't actually test a jogger. The results are based on the Dacia Sandero Stepway, which shares the same platform. And these tests, well, they aren't really kind to cars like the jogger that lack some modern driver assist systems. Just one more thing before I go. I've just dropped the fellas off at the pub. But I thought, what's one of the most important things when you're buying a seven seater? And that is how easy is it to get in the back seat? Well, <laughs> Oh, that was easy. Look at that. Easy. Yeah. Well done, Dacia. Great seven-seater and an absolute bargain.